Okay, so um, after that, we have our final thing, which is just uh, digital circuits. I don't know why it's like this, but you know, that's all right. So we're going to be talking about what can logic gates do, building a circuit, simplifying circuits, and their equivalence to Boolean expressions. So this is really like the meat and potatoes of digital electronics. Um, this is what the majority of Axel problems are about when uh, you what most Axel digital electronics problems are about. You'll see that today, later today on your contest. So we'll start with a quick overview of what logic gates can do. Um, there might be a lot of gates to remember, but they each serve a different purpose, which can help you hopefully help you realize just how important each one of them is and how the importance of knowing each of them inside and out and what they do. So we have an example here of XOR. You guys know about XOR. If the two inputs are different, it outputs one, otherwise it outputs zero. Um, this is it's this is what we learn about, but really it's similar to binary addition, which you should have learned about earlier. You know how 0 plus 0 is 0, 0 plus 1, forwards or backwards is always 1, and 1 plus 1 in this case equals 0 um, because you carry the 1. In traditional binary, 1 plus 1 equals 1, 0, but you're not going to worry about the tens digit here, or I guess the twos digit. Um, so 1 plus 1 equals 0, but a way to make this easy to remember is just if they're different then it outputs true otherwise it outputs false yeah so um basically the carry only happens if both inputs are one which means you just need to add an and gates to get rid of this um this looks quite complicated but really it just means that the it just means that you have, um, you get rid of the XOR, this just becomes A plus B without the carry. Otherwise, it carries the here, which becomes just a regular AND. I, yeah, that's kind of convoluted. It's not really drawn correctly either, but, you know, if you're just familiar with the inputs and outputs of each gate for now, you should be fine. So the complete circuit for adding one digit looks something like this. Again, it's very convoluted, very complicated, but um, this is essentially what goes on inside of the computers. All this just to add one digit, it's pretty wild. So again, this really ties back to what we had earlier about building circuits. If this is the implementation for one digit addition, there are you do as many as you wanted just with a bunch of these. And then that also means that once you have all the addition circuits done, you can go on to multiplication, which means you can go on to um, division and subtraction, which from there is basically just your ticket to pretty much any type of math imaginable. You just need those four basic operations. So with those, um, Arithmetic operations combined with some logical reasonings, which obviously can be done with your gates here. There isn't really much that can't be done with these, which is really, which is really what's going on with these computers now. They're very powerful. You have a lot to. They can. They're capable of a lot. So with these logic gates, you can build um, pretty much anything. And then. You'd also want to simplify circuits like this to improve efficiency. It doesn't seem very efficient to have to go through the circuit every time you want to do a one-digit addition problem. So um, this is what simplifying a circuit really looks like. Uh, you can, essentially, it's similar to changing it to a Boolean expression because you know that this gate right here is an AND. This create right here is an OR, which means um, the A and the B inputs both go into this AND gate right here, giving you AB over here and A at this input over here. 
So this simplifies to A or AB. And then since A plus AB equals A, um, the, this circuit right here is equivalent to just a straight line. Um, the Basically, the output for this will always be just A. As you can see here, A is 0, 0, 1, and 1. Down here, it's the same 0, 0, 1, and 1. So again, you won't you don't have to do a bunch of unnecessary operations when you could just simplify it into a much more basic, much more basic solution. So this one's a bit, this one has three gates. You have a not, an and, and an or. And so you do the same thing. You know that the inputs for this and right here are not A and B, or yeah, not A and B, which then simplifies for the um, inputs of the OR gate here to be A or um, not A and B. So you have here not A and B, and then the final circuit is A and not B, as shown here. Again, this simplifies to A and B. So hopefully that makes sense. These are relatively simple problems, but um, they get a little more complicated here. Here we have three variables. Again, it simplifies. It's going to be harder to keep track of these in your head, but if you can just write them down, write the inputs next to the left side of each gate and the outputs next to the right side. It'll make it much easier to keep track. For this one, looks like it simplifies to A and BC. Uh, you can turn basically this gate into this gate, which again makes things a lot easier to solve. It makes it a lot easier to like um, count the inputs and outputs in the truth table. So again, just be sure you know how to do this. It's pretty much one of, it always shows up on Axel, on Axel problems. Um, especially converting these digital circuits to Boolean expressions. Again, because each of these gates is basically just the equivalence to, an, um, to a Boolean expression, uh, you can, basically convert these circuits into a Boolean expression. Be sure you know how to do that. That will be on your contest today. There's a little hint for you. Um, each variable in a Boolean expression can be um, matches up with the inputs of a digital circuit. The Boolean operations are the basically equivalent to the logic gates of the circuit, as I said. Um, and simplifying the Boolean expression, which you learned how to do next uh, last week, will also simplify the circuit. You'll have a lot less, um, you'll have less gates to use. And again, it's going to be something like using this gate versus this gate. And both of these can be expressed using a truth table.